Hi, this is Greg Shields, and I'm going to show you how to control the execution of your applications using AppLocker. You'll see here I've brought up the uh, Group Policy Management Console, and I've created a new Group Policy object. This one I've just called AppLocker. What I want to do to actually create an application control policy is to, well, first edit this AppLocker policy. You'll see I've brought it up here instead of the Group Policy Management Editor. If I scroll down past Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, you'll see a node down here called Application Control Policies, and this is where AppLocker really lives. Now the first thing you have to do to really turn on AppLocker is to actually enable its rule enforcement. If I click here on AppLocker, you'll see the Configure Rule Enforcement link, and if I then click that, I have three different options for the different types of rules that I want to turn on. Executable Rules, Windows Installer Rules, and Script Rules. For each of these three, I can turn them on, and then once they're turned on, I can configure whether I want to enforce the rules or just set so they'll audit only. In the audit only configuration, no applications will actually be prevented from executing. However, I will get event log error messages that let me know that users are attempting to run these prevented applications. As you can imagine, audit only is good for ensuring that I've got the right app locker rules configured at first. So if I set these to configure and if I set them to also enforce the rules, this will actually turn on app locker for executable rules, Windows installer, and script rules. Under the Advanced tab here, you'll see that we can also turn on DLL rule collection. However, we are given a warning that turning this on can affect system performance. It's generally not a good idea to turn on DLL rule collection unless you really mean it. Once I've turned on AppLocker, I can click the OK button here, and then I need to go and actually configure the rules that I want to turn on. If I click Executable Rules and then right-click it, you'll see I have three primary options here. Create New Rule, automatically generate rules, and then create default rules. At the very first, what I want to do is create the default rules because these set up those default rules for how I will actually use AppLocker. What this does is turn on the whitelisting type of approach that we talked about in the article. Now once I've created those default rules, one of the easiest ways that you can create a list of rules associated with a computer is by right-clicking executable rules and choosing automatically generate rules. Now what I want to do is actually run this generation tool, this, this inventory tool, against a computer that is configured via some sort of baseline configuration that I've deployed to my users. I can set this to run against the program files or I can run it against the entire C drive. I can choose which user security group I want the rules to apply to and then also a name to identify this set of rules. Once I click the next button, I can choose what types of rules I want to create, whether these be publisher rules or file hash rules. If I, if I want, I can also reduce the number of rules that are created by grouping together similar files. Now what this does is this determines what types of rules are being created. If I actually am going to look at that digital signature associated with, with each executable via a publisher rule, or if I'm just going to hash all the files or the, all the executables on this computer. It's generally a good idea to start with publisher rules wherever possible and then resort to file hash rules as your second line of defense. If I choose the next button, it's going to go through the process of inventorying all the executables on this computer. In this case, I did just the files in C program files. And then once it's done, it will show me which rules it's created. Here I've created nine publisher rules and one file hash rules. And I've looked at 20 different files, and, uh, excuse me, 26 different files in total. If I choose the Create button here, you'll see that those rules have now been created. And these actually allow these executables to run on the computers that are configured. Once I'm done with this, I can choose any Windows installer rules or script rules as well, and then ultimately deploy this group policy to the computers in my domain.